they will establish the world order of Gog and Magog. And since their power is indestructible, only Allah can destroy it, it would appear to Francis Fukuyama that this is the end of history. When Gog and Magog are released, then they will use their power, their control over the world, they spread out in all directions. And now you will see the people of this town being brought back to the town to reclaim it. Which town is it? We have now come to a crucial part of our subject, Jerusalem in the Quran. Then you will see these people being brought back to their town. Not as tourists, <laughs> to reclaim it. Which town is it? That is the question. Who should answer that question? Let us go to a man named Muhammad alayhi salatu Meaning, let us go to the hadith. Let us look for all the ahadiths that there are on Gog and Magog. In nine books of hadith, there are 58 ahadiths. I've gone through all 58 of them. Let us look to see whether there is any town which is mentioned connected with Gog and Magog, which was destroyed by Allah. When we go through all the 58 ahadiths, we find only one town mentioned connected with Gog and Magog. And it was a town which was destroyed by Allah, and it was Jerusalem. Of course, the, the Hadith does not have the word Jerusalem, it has the word Baitul Maqdis, an Arabic word. And so we have come to the conclusion that the town which is mentioned in Surah Al-Anbiya is Jerusalem. And so what the Qur'an is saying according to our interpretation is that Allah destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed therefore the state of Israel, expelled the Jews from the Holy Land, and then banned their return. They could come back as tourists, yes, but they cannot come back to reclaim the Holy Land unless and until Gog and Magog are released. And when they are released, they spread out in all directions, therefore they take control of the world, and therefore the world order will be the world order of Gog and Magog, and that world order will make possible the return of Banu Israel to the Holy Land. Who are Gog and Magog? Good question, eh? Good question. When we have the lecture on Surah al kafras tomorrow. Tomorrow at uh, Dara come at uh, 5 o'clock, we will deal with this subject in greater detail. But for, for the purposes of today's lecture, in order to identify Gog and Magad, we must look for a people who are responsible for bringing the Jews back to the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. Who are they? A people who are obsessed with the Holy Land. Who are they? I want you to look at Europe. After the time of Prophet Muhammad Because Gog and Magog are released in the lifetime of the Prophet himself. The proof. Eight ahadis in Sahih Bukhari. Eight. One event narrated in Sahih Bukhari eight times. The God and Magal were released in the lifetime of the Prophet himself. So we have to look for a people after Muhammad who are obsessed with the Holy Land. Europe became Christian. And that Europe is now obsessed with the Holy Land and engages in what even Singapore would know about, the Crusades. But they are the only Christians who want to liberate the Holy Land. None of the other Christians. Go to your homework, you see. Only European Christians. 
Christians want to liberate the Holy Land and the Crusades. And so we say to you, Singapore, that the Crusades were not an essentially Christian effort to liberate the Holy Land. No. The Crusades were an essentially European effort camouflage in the clothes of Christianity to liberate the Holy Land. And then one Sunday morning, a strange thing happened. Some of the Europeans became Jews. <laughs> I thought you had to be born as a Jew. You had to be this from the seed of Abraham. But a strange thing happened. And these Jews, they also have an obsession with the Holy Land. They establish a movement called the Zionist Movement. And the mission of the Zionist Movement is to liberate the Holy Land and bring the Jews back to the Holy Land. But the strangest thing of all is, these are the only Jews who want to do that. The other Jews, who are not European, they are not a part of this. And so I have something to suggest to you, that the Zionist movement is not an essentially Jewish movement. The Zionist movement is an essentially European movement camouflaged in the dress of Judaism. And so it is Europe all around who is obsessed with the Holy Land. And then another Sunday morning, it was the island of Britain which is the ruling state in the world, which declares in 1917, I mean, there have been stranger things in life, but what, very few stranger than this, that the God bless British government, because the church is empty, they're being sold as bingo halls, <laughs> the God bless British government announces to a very startled world in 1970, that the godless British government is now going to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home in the Holy Land. So again, it is, it is Europe, obsessed with the Holy Land. In 1919, it is a British army that defeats Turkey, the, the Ottoman army and liberates the Holy Land for the Jews. And between 1919 and 1948, Britain opens the doors for the Jews to return. And 1948, Britain acts as a midwife for the baby to be born, the state of Israel. And so now it is as plain and as clear as daylight that Gog and Magog were released in Europe. And modern European civilization is the civilization of Gog and Magog. Those who control the world today, in whose hands is power, belong to the family of God and Magad. But Allah says, I have raised them, that they may inflict upon Banu Israel, until the last day, the worst possible punishment. And so God and Magad, are actually taking Banu Israel for a ride. And it's the last ride on which they never go. Who else will Allah raise? Because the verse of the Quran says Allah is going to raise against them those who inflict upon them until the last day the worst possible punishment. Who else will Allah raise? We now turn to the Prophet Muhammad to answer that question. And this is a very interesting part of the lecture, so sit down and relax. <laughs> the Prophet said that Allah created a being and endowed that being with awesome power, awesome versatility, and what I describe as a PhD in deception. إنما الناس قضايا وقيم والحضارات نماء وبناء وشباب بهدى الله